Public Service Committee meeting. Today is June 17th, the time is 6 p.m. Um, I am the committee chair, uh, Juan Anderson Burgos, Ward 6 City Councilor. To my left, we have Howard Graney, uh, at-large councilor, and Ward 2 City Councilor, Carmen Ocasio. Um, this, yeah. Oh, and we also have, <laughs> We also have Councilor at Large Patty Devine and Ward 4 Councilor Cocaine Givner. Um, so, this meeting is on the Community Access Channel. We are on Zoom, live streamed, and recorded. If anyone from the committee would like to I'd make. Like to make a motion to uh, take up the minutes off the table and approve them. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So item number one on the table is minutes of February 21st, 2024 meeting. Has anyone have any questions or are they good with the minutes? Anybody in the committee? Okay. They're good? Okay. The meetings have been approved and accepted. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Motion to take up item number two off the table. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. No, no, you're fine. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. So item number two is from Mayor Joshua Garcia, letter appointing Katherine Pratt of 11 Lex Lexington Ave to serve on HEDIC, Ms. Ms. Pratt will replace Rosa Pantoja and will serve a three-year term expiring June 30th, 2027. Um, is Ms. Pratt here? Could you please come in and uh, make sure your microphone is on? Have a seat at one of the tables. All right. Welcome, Ms. Pratt. Thank Thanks. you for your interest in this application. Um, so please tell us a little bit about yourself, your interest in, in the position. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, so I've been a resident of Holyoke uh, since 2009, and my background is in engineering. Um, I've worked as a systems engineer on um, green power, uh, power plants, fuel cell power plants uh, for a total of about 10 years, and I spent about eight years working in the aerospace industry on um, complex systems to support um, uh, crewed space missions. Uh, so I have uh, that technical background. I'm interested in joining HEDIC uh, as a member of the community, looking, um, looking forward to uh, increasing um, businesses and employment within the city. Um, and uh, especially interested in any um, technical opportunities that come through and want to kind of provide my lens of things there. Any of the committee members have any questions for Mrs. Pratt? Yeah, and just a quick, yep, cool. quick question. Um, what is your take on natural gas as a, a heating element? I think um, natural gas does lead to carbon emissions. Um, and so ultimately the way forward is to seek uh, zero carbon emission fuel sources. And um, we have to do that shift at some point. You know, we have, we have natural gas now and there are ways to make power with less carbon emissions with natural gas. Um, but there are other fuel sources available with zero carbon emissions. How about nuclear power? Uh, could you say that again? How about nuclear power? Nuclear power? Um, I guess I don't have a strong opinion to share about nuclear power. That's all. Did you have any questions? No, I'm not Councilor Givner? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, thanks for coming in and uh, wanting to do some awesome volunteer work for Holyoke. We always need it, so it's appreciated. I'm just wondering, you said you've been here since 2009. Why now? 
I think, uh, well, I was uh, presented with this suggestion um, from Aaron Vega, and he um, kind of opened up my mind to the, the thought of it. I haven't uh, participated in local government much, and uh, so I thought this could be a, a good way to kind of expand my experience. Uh, I've also been uh, just focused on my family. Um, I have some young children, and uh, my husband and I also started a business in Holyoke, and uh, we own Holyoke Craft Beer, so I've been pretty busy with all of those things, uh, but I have some, some time now to, to support. Councilor Devine. Yeah, um, the fact that Aaron Vega is recommending you is enough for me, so good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So I will add, um, I read your resume and I was very, very impressed. Um, but as you're speaking, you also own a business in Holyoke. So to me, that is very important that you're investing, even your time, which says a lot. And the fact that also that uh, former colleague Aaron Vega has recommended and, and encouraged, I think that says a lot as well. So thank you for your time. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'd like to entertain a motion to recommend the appointment to the full city council, which will take place tomorrow, the 18th at 7 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's three to zero. If I might, Mr. Chairman, also our meeting will be at um, channel 15 at seven o'clock if you want to watch it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Pratt. All right, thank you. Thank you. Motion to take item number three off the table. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Item number three from Mayor Joshua Garcia. Letter appointing Lauren Niles of 40 Lexington Ave to serve as a commissioner of the planning board. Ms. Niles will replace Mr. Nathan Chung and will serve the remainder of his term expiring June 30th, 2027. Um, do we have Ms. Niles here? Ms. Niles, please have a seat. Is the mic on? Not yet. Just push the, the green. Yeah. There you go. Green there we go. Perfect. Um, so please introduce yourself uh, to, to the committee. Hi, I'm Lauren Niles. I've lived in Holyoke since 2018. I currently am an alternate on planning board, so this would be moving me up to being a voting member instead of just I've attended all of the meetings for the past two years as an alternate and occasionally get to speak up on the projects that are coming in front of us. Um, I'm also on the local historic district commission. Nice. I'm the chairperson of that and I'm on CPA. So obviously being active in Holyoke politics is important to me. So you've already <laughs> dipped your toes. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Which is good. Nice. Um, did any of the committee members have any questions? Just quickly, yeah. if you could comment on owner and proprietor of Med Props LLC of Boston, what did that entail? Oh, sure. Um, I owned and operated a prop rental house in Boston. Um, I ran it with my husband, and we catered to the film and photography industries, so we had props that they could rent for f movies and for photo shoots. Okay. I was a stylist before I was a realtor. <laughs> Nice. Did you have any questions? Yep, I'm done. Okay, so I do have a question. Yeah, um, please. So I'm interested, and in, under skills, you, you have listed property valuation. Yes. Can you give me a little bit of information? I mean, I know what it means, but oh, yeah, I want yeah. to Absolutely. hear from you what that means to you. So I'm a realtor, so that's a really important part of the job, right. is trying to figure out what things are worth when I'm dealing with a client, either on the buy side or the sell side, trying to look at the market values, look at the location, look at um, the upgrades to the building, or you know, has the building fall, fallen into deterioration, and like taking that into consideration before we put a price on it. So That's... Perfect. That's yeah. what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, I entertain a motion. I think that's all the questions, just to make sure. Oh. I just have a quick question. Sure. sure. Um, Lauren, you and I nice have corresponded. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. We've corresponded um, through email. Uh, for the Sacred Heart Commission. Uh -huh. So I just wanted to thank you for responding to my questions. Yeah. And certainly um, uh, being an alternate on the planning board is a plus as well. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. 
So I'll entertain a motion um, to recommend the appointment to the full city council, which will take place tomorrow, the 18th at 7 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. That's three to zero. See you tomorrow if you will, if you oh, want. Oh, do we need to? Yes. Yeah, so we should attend the city council meeting. You don't know. No, no, no. Zoom. Channel okay. fifteen. You can watch o'clock. over channel fifteen. Correct. Make some popcorn. Cold <laughs> drink. <laughs> it might be a long night. <laughs> Like someone like to make a motion? Take item number four off the table. Second. Item number four, Mayor Joshua Garcia, letter appointing Miss Astrid DeSoti. Did I say that correctly? DeSoti? DeSoute. DeSoute. Do you remember that? I gave it a French <laughs> swirl. Uh, DeSoute from 13 O'Connor Ave to serve as a member of the Recycling Advisory Committee. Ms. DeSoot will replace Meg McGrath-Smith and will serve the remainder of the term expiring August 1st, 1st 2026. Um, Ms. DeSoot, welcome. Thank you so much for your interest in this position. Um, can you give us a little bit about your background and your interest? Sure. Uh, first, my name is Astrid, and I live and work in Holyoke, often on live now here for good, but started back in the 80s and really liked the city. So I worked at CHD for 23 years, mental health, substance use, and domestic violence. And I'm now on eternal vacation since <laughs> September 22, and I can focus on some other issues of interest, which is recycle. So um, I grew up in post-war Germany, so recycling, reusing, donating, and stretching everything as far as you could possibly stretch it was part of my upbringing. And if I see that we can improve our recycling here in the city, that's what I'm interested in. That's why I want to join this committee to have some input on and maybe some ideas of how we can improve what we're doing. Well said. Thank you so much. Any of the committee members have any questions? Quickly. Yes. Yes. Astrid, ma'am. Astrid. Yeah. Do you have any uh, comments on the, uh, the large barrel recycling problem or situation in Hoyoke? Mm -hmm. The possibilities of those being uh, a hindrance to senior citizens in the winter months? Well, yeah, I'm part of the, the senior center as well. So we have all, all of the bigger organizations, like I went to a place today to drop off bottles and cans, and there's always a bunch that they don't accept because there's no, no uh, return on it. So I said, well, where's your recycle bin so I can put the glass and the, the, the cans in their recycle bin? I said, oh, we don't do that. We throw all that in the trash. So it, there is a lot of room for improvement here in the city with organizations, places of business, and even small homes. And we have a multifamily. And I'm teaching, I'm trying to educate our tenants to do the recycle properly as well. You know, if it's dual stream or single stream, and there's lots of things that you can't recycle, but there's always room for donation because there's plenty of organizations that will even come to your house to pick up donations, so. Uh, I just, I don't know whether you answered my question about the large barrels, the large recycling barrels yeah. that the residents have. Do you have any comment on the possibility of seniors not being able to handle those large barrels during the winter months? Well, I think um, the Recycle Committee is working at this point on different sizes, mm -hmm. just like the trash cans, you can request a smaller one, and you can always use the little small blue bins, and, and they're available. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you have any questions? 
move to recommend the appointment. Oh, um, no, no. oh I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question was towards, because I know there's a few people here in Holyoke, they are like handicapped, but they, they only just use the wheelchair, they have no legs. So, and they're having a lot of trouble trying to get the, the, um, the trash barrel mm -hmm. where it's supposed to be at mm -hmm. so, so they can pick it up. Um, do you have any ideas on how to improve that? Well, I would have to see what's available for assistance because I think uh, if you're a person with a disability, you usually qualify for a home health aid or something of that nature, and they can possibly assist the person that's in a wheelchair to do, do the recycle if necessary. And if not, then maybe... Um, call DPW and see if they can do a special pickup for that person. I don't know if that's a possibility, but I can check into that. Thank you. Councilor Devine, did you Yeah, um, I think Councilor Graney was talking about trash barrels rather than recycling. Is that right? Um, the big ones. Too. Yeah, if you go down to the DPW, they have three different sizes because I was able to right. get a smaller version, so you might want to try no. that. Okay. I'll entertain a motion uh, to recommend the appointment to the full city council, which will take place tomorrow, the 18th, at 7 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's three to zero. Thank you so much, Astrid. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Move to take item number five off the table. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So item number five is from Mayor J Joshua Garcia. Letter appointing Mr. James P. O'Connell of 25 Brookline Ave to serve on the Recycling Advisory Committee. Mr. O'Connell will replace Miss, oh, I'm gonna chop this name up, Markeisha, Markeisha Don Davis, and will serve the remainder of her term expiring August 1st, 2026. I am assuming, yes, Mr. O'Connell, you are on Zoom, correct? Yes, I'm here. Mr. O'Connell, welcome. Thank you so much for your interest. Thanks for having me. Sorry I um, couldn't make it. Late meeting. No worries. I completely understand. <laughs> um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in this um, appointment. Sure. I'm Jamie O'Connell, born and raised oil boy. Um, lived here all my life. A, I have been in the recycling business. I do uh, absolute different recycling. I do um, e-waste and I'm now in charge of the United States for my company's solar panel recycling. Mm. Um, so I'm my, basically my goal is for my company is what we're doing is becoming 100% no landfill company. So meaning everything gets recycled and there is a way to recycle everything in this planet. It's just figuring it out and thinking outside the box and this is what the city of Hoyoke needs to do. Um, I look forward to uh, hopefully putting some good import into the city. Uh, again, I've been here all my life. I love the city and there's nothing I more I don't love talking about. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm open for any questions or anything you'd ask. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Connell. Anybody from the committee have any questions? Quickly, yeah. go ahead. Yes, Mr. O'Connell, just quickly. Uh, how do you recycle or where do you recycle solar panels? So my recycling facilities in New Jersey, uh, Merced, California, and Temple, Texas right now. My goal in the next year or so is to do something out of oil nice. um it's just figuring out the warehouses um because the, the, just doing a job i just did a job up in maine last week and to get it to new jersey it's very costly um again i want to bring my business to oil so that's something i will be working on for the next year um but how and when do does this process take place? 
because there's going to be an awful lot of uh, solar panels that are going to be. Oh, I've uh, been doing it. I've been doing it for six years now. Um, how, how does so, it, how does I want ex, just explain to me how does it? What do you do? How do you oh, get rid of them? Or I should say okay. recycle. So I have machinery in New Jersey. What I do is I pop the aluminum frame off the solar panel. I then put the solar panel through a shredding machine. I put it through a second time where it pulverizes the panel itself. So everything is completely uh, like a powder. Um, right now we are testing it in cement barriers. So we put in like the Jersey barriers for filling. Uh, we're testing it in roadways because the glass is completely taken down. Um, where it's not affecting, you know what I mean? How do I explain this to you? <laughs> um, basically, it's being used where it's a, a powder and it's all being able to be reused, but we're actually testing it because it's expensive the way we're doing it right now. Am I making it clear? Or? Yeah, yeah, somewhat. What about... Uh Car batteries, so you're going to be involved in that so at all? Car batteries, um, I've done that. I have never done the car batteries, but I've done batteries. Um, your battery systems, you, we, we would send them downstream to another vendor. That vendor would then be able to retake and reuse um, most of it, and the rest would go down to another downstream vendor, where that vendor would use the rest of the, the material. So it all gets reused. It's just, I have never followed it through that far. Um, I just go, it's called an R2B3 um, is what we go by, which is green earth recycling, 100%. Um, so interesting. you have to use, you Interesting, have to use, it, it, it yeah. sounds like a very daunting task. It's, it is, and it's expensive, but it, I mean, it's gotta be done. I have children, um, we all have kids or family, that you got to care about and like i said this we need to think outside the box and a lot of these things to uh get the city going the same way um and i hope i can put some input in it and i'm actually looking forward to learning about uh our recycling system better thank you miss councillor divine yes thank you um councillor i'd also I'd uh, like to mention that I have known uh, James uh, for bet, a gazillion years, and I've known yeah. his family, and I know what a hard worker is, and obviously um, he's talked about uh, what he does, and he's certainly knowledgeable about that, so I have absolutely no problem endorsing him. Uh, so hopefully Thank you'll you. be with us, and great to see you. You too. Thank you. I wish I made it today. That's okay. Mr. O'Connell, um, I can't thank you enough for your interest in, in this um, appointment. And, you know, looking at your resume, it's very, very impressive. Um, I'm looking at where it states brought in over $5 million of business in the first year. And, you know, you can tell you're from Holyoke, right? <laughs> you're very resilient and, and you're a go-getter. And that's what we need. This is, this is people we need filling in these, um, these chairs. Uh, so I want to thank you for your time and your, uh, you'll be going to full city council for a recommendation. Um, so I'd like to entertain a motion to recommend the appointment to the full city council, which will be June 18th at 7 p.m. All those in favor? So moved. Aye. Second. Aye. That's any no's? All right, so three to zero. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Connell. Thank you all. Take care. Item six Have off the day. table, please. Remove item six off the table. So item number six from Mayor Joshua Garcia, letter reappointing Mr. James Sutter of 30 Fairfield Ave to serve as a commissioner on the gas and electric. Mr. Sutter, Mr. Sutter will serve a six year term expiring July 1st, 2030. Mr. Sutter, please have a seat. And you know the mic is right, it's already on. It's on. Yep. Yeah, I think it's on. Yep, yep, it's on. <laughs> Mr. Sutter, thank you so much for um, joining us today and tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest. 
Oh, well, um, of course, I am a city resident. I've been the majority of my life, though I uh, did live briefly in Northampton, uh, where my parents uh, had some property. Uh, having moved from Holyoke in the, you know, the late 60s and starting a business up there, which I brought back to Holyoke. Um, we've since transferred to more of an online platform, but that's my, uh, so that's my business, personal, majority of my personal business uh, tra trajectory, we'll say. Um, as far as uh, the gas and electric, I've been a commissioner for two terms. It's uh, by far the most interesting thing the city owns. Yeah. And uh, I wish you'd ask me the question about natural gas. I have some very good answers for it. Good. <laughs> I'll ask it. All right. <laughs> well, natural gas is a complicated fuel. Like any fuel, it is a finite fuel source. So I would love to, I think we'd all like a fuel source that came from somewhere else that cost us all nothing and left us no residue. I think, you know, we'd all agree that it'd be nice to have some magical unicorn feathers that you know, made everything work perfectly. That being said, our grid is not strong enough at this point to electrify everything. We can't put every heating unit just on this street alone. I know of numerous businesses that would love to convert to electrification of all of their heating. They'd like air source heat pumps. We don't have the load capacity right now. We are tens of millions of dollars away from the load capacity while also looking at the cost of upgrading and maintaining an aging natural gas system. Luckily, we've received significant federal money towards updating our downtown, the largest sections of it. But the answer to the question is that it's a fuel source we need right now. We absolutely need it for economic development, and we need it because it's better than heating oil from an environmental and a human health standpoint. Um, if you look at the particulate matter that comes out of a heating oil-fired furnace versus a natural gas-fired furnace, the natural gas-fired furnace is significantly better for people. That's not to, be, to say that natural gas, you know, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide aren't great things. We'd all love to have less of them. And in a city that does have one of those magical power sources, we do have a river, does give us nominally 85 megawatts of power at any given time. Um, last year, we actually broke a record for production. Those are great times when we can do that. And if we were an efficient enough place that we could live off that power, that would be wonderful because we wouldn't have to bring anything in from outside and certainly something that has a risk associated with it. There's a reason why, the, uh, why Columbia Gas had to leave Massachusetts. The other thing I would bring up, though, that we got painted in a poor light by um, the letter that the former mayor wrote regarding natural gas. We were under agreement with Columbia Gas of Massachusetts to move our gas interconnect from its current location to a new location, increasing our capacity by roughly 50%. We were moving forward with it. We were not shying off. We were not pulling back on the pedal for all the reasons I just said. That being said, don't get me wrong, I'd love to sell more electricity. It's what we do. We're really an electric company. That's what we have the most infrastructure in. But we do both of them, and they're both important. So. I'm aware of that, yeah. that those it's transactions. Uh, what about nuclear power? Nuclear power? We already own entitlements to currently two remaining nuclear power plants. I'm a big believer that it is a carbon-free power source. Um, the problem is the waste. The tiny amount of waste that you have, no one wants to take it. So it's it's a logistics problem. It's not a realistic safety problem from a practical standpoint. That being said, the market economics of nuclear power are a different animal. The last time a major national producer, uh, generator of electricity, um, started plans to build a new power plant, not to continue production of one that was started 20 years ago or add a reactor to an existing plant. The one in Roe? Uh, no, not Roe. No, it was, this was in uh, Indiana, I want to say. And it was 20 years ago. They took a significant hit on their market value, which has put them in a position where most of the people who would build these are not in a rush to say they're going to build one, not because of the practical realities, but because of the market reality that no one wants to hear they're building them because they don't want it to be in their backyard. Yeah. But they are, they're a great power source, I think. Yeah. One other quick question. What do you see as the major source of power for Hoyoke in the near future? 
Well, I mean, currently our major source is hydroelectric power in the Connecticut River. Given the weather patterns we've gotten recently, it doesn't look like it's going to dry up. We don't have the Rio Grande. We don't use it for irrigation. Um, I don't foresee that changing. I know that from the state level, the writing is on the wall about natural gas. Whether we wanted, whether everyone in this city wanted natural gas, the state is going to force our hand. Currently, the state, the administration at the very least, is going to force our hand in moving off of natural gas. It actually presents some issues for the gas and electric because we already produce so much of our power without carbon that to remove more carbon from our mix is a much more difficult, you know, we've got a diminishing return situation. But Once again, Mr. Sutter, yeah. just a so couple, couple more questions. That's you know? fine. How about propane? Well, I mean, I'm never a fan of moving anything that we have to over the roads, you know, in small volumes. I think that, you know, if you take an example, um, with uh, CDI, CDP, um, Mark Cutting's facility that also is, uh, is it True Leaf now? One of the cultivation mm -hmm. facilities. They have a permanent propane truck parked in a fenced enclosure outside their vehicle, uh, outside their building. That's not the safest solution. That's, I would rather be pumping natural gas through stationary lines that we check regularly. I, driving these things around on the roads just isn't smart. I agree. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's the major source of power for any new homeowners or yeah. so forth that are coming into yeah. Hoyoke. We've got 180, 200 uh, denials right now yeah. that we're... Wow. And I don't know if you were old enough oh. to remember the uh, Great Northeast Blackout. I was not. I, w I know that one. I know you do. But uh, we, were the only, we were the only city in the eastern seaboard that had power uh -huh. because of the Hoyoke Water Power Company. Yep. In fact, next year, this is one of the few years where we will not be legally self-powered. The only reason we are not is because we sold the rights to call some of our power our power only so that we could stabilize rates just to keep prices even through that crazy spike in gas prices. Thank you, Mr. Sutter. Did you have a question? No, I'm all set, thank you. Huh? I'm all set. Okay. Yep. Councilor Devine. Can you do me a favor? I can't read who's on Zoom. Could you tell me? Yes, so there's um, Attorney Bissonette outside, it's his chambers, media, and interpreter. That's it, right? That's it. Okay, just wanna, Thank you for coming down here, and thank you for sending us um, something this afternoon about your quality. I had an eventful weekend. My car got flooded at the top of Hamden Street oh. in front of Astro Video. It's like getting in a flood on From Beamer. car to boat? <laughs> it was the least likely location to have a car get flooded. Yeah. God forbid you live in Springdale and the dam breaks. Oh. Well, I just wanted to thank you, and I know that. Um, how long have you been a gas and electric commissioner? At this point, two terms. Two okay. terms. So six apiece? Six, so it's 12. And the reason I asked about who was on Zoom, because normally we don't bring reappointments unless a city councilor may ask that that be brought. And it was city councilor Bartley, who I, that's why I asked you who was on Zoom. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming down. And you certainly have my vote. That is interesting. Where did it go? Did you just, I just had, here it is. My apologies. I usually have everything in front of me. Um, so first, let me start by saying, I'm. Anybody else have any questions before I? No. I am thoroughly impressed, and you brought me to school <laughs> and educated me. Well, and I think you guys never that. called Brian Beauregard in here. <laughs> you, you have to go for it. You've been here for oh, yeah. his oh, yeah. sermons. Yeah. No, I, 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 I thoroughly thank you um, for your presentation, your dedication, and your knowledge. Um, that's highly important. And you hit the nail nails on the head each and every single time. Um, one of the things when I'm looking at relevant experience, and of course it's the first one here, managed many residential and commercial projects from initiation to completion, ensuring adherence to project timeless and budget constraints. To me, key is budget constraints because you have to know what you're doing because at the end of the day, cost is everything. And let's face it, whether you're running a home or a business, Mm. We are trying to make sure we are saving. Mm. So that to me stuck out. Um, I'm certain that 
you you will be reappointed. I shouldn't be saying that, but I feel in my heart. Uh, I don't see why anybody wouldn't. So I would entertain a motion um, to send the recommendation uh, to the full city council, which will take place July 18th, tomorrow at 7 p.m. June. Did I say July? Yes, sorry. I think I want June to be done. <laughs> this heat is killing me. June 18th, tomorrow at 7 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? No? So that's three to zero. Thank you so much for your time. And the final thing that everybody gets excited. All those in favor? This meeting has adjourned. Thank you so much for everyone who's watching at home and everyone who came here in person. Thank you. Thank you.